Hi and welcome to this video demonstration for KD Max. This is a quick overview of how KD Max works with drawing a basic kitchen. To start our kitchen, we're going to add in a very basic 6 meter by 4 meter rectangular room. We're going to add in a ceiling by clicking on the room toolbar and then auto ceiling. Clicking inside our room and the program automatically recognizes where it can place a ceiling. So then all that's left for you to do is to confirm the elevation of your ceiling, which we've entered in here as 2500. Next we're going to enter in some down lights. To do that we're going to click on the room toolbar again and then go down to the linear spotlight option. This enables us to draw a line and then place down lights along that line. So we're just going to copy those down lights that we've created and drag them down to create another matching line of down lights. Now we also want to add in some natural lighting into our room. So we're going to add in a couple of windows on two of our walls. The first one we've placed at 600 from the right wall and now we're just placing our second one in, in the middle of our left wall. Now we're going to finish off this room by adding in a door. Once we're happy with our room layout, click on the 3D button on your toolbar. This is the purple cube and this is going to start to take us into our room. Now we're prompted with our global style settings section. We've got a few options in here. Essentially this is where we're setting up the defaults for everything that's going to be brought into your drawing. So first thing we look at is the color of your door. So this is where you can choose from your colors, your door profiles as well. And then when you add a cabinet in, it's going to bring forth those selections. Next, we're going to navigate to the handle section and click on the install check boxes. This is going to place handles on the various types of door products in the system. Next, we're going to navigate to the worktop section this is where we are going to set up some of the defaults for the worktop that is going to be used in our drawing. For example, here we're going to set our thickness to 30mm and we're going to set our overhang to 20mm and we are also going to set up our side overhang for our bench top at 16 The last thing we'll change here in this section is our wall unit elevation and this is just the height that we want our upper cabinets to come in at. We're going to set that to 1800 in this scenario. Okay, so we're now into our room. You can see the windows that we have set up. Uh, we can click and drag to navigate around our room. But let's start adding in some products. So what we've done here is grabbed a filler piece. We're going to place this at the wall unit elevation level and our filler is going to be 40 mil wide. We're going to place that up against that wall. Next, we're going to add in an overhead cabinet which will sit above our fridge space and this is going to be 960 by 350 deep and 600 high. Now we're going to add in a, a tall end panel which is going to sit against the overhead to create that fridge space. So here we're going to set the width to 18mm for the thickness of our board. The depth is going to be 600 and the height at 2400. Now we're just going to bring our cabinet forward and make sure it lines up with the front of the end panel and the same for our filler. Okay, so we're going to continue building out our kitchen now with a tall cabinet with a pair of doors. We're going to enter that in at 1000 wide by 600 deep and 2280 high. You will note there that we're sitting up on our kick height of 120 to take it to the overall height of 2.4. Now we're going to copy our end panel that we use beside our fridge space and we're going to put that on the other side of our tall cabinet. Next we're going to start adding in some base units. So our, all our base units are going to be 720 high and 580 deep. So first thing is we're going to put in a right open door at 400 wide. So we're putting that into position and now we're going to add in a underbench oven unit and that one's going to go in at 600 wide. Now you can see from the dimensions on the screen that we have 964 millimeter gap left to the edge of the wall so here what we're going to do is we're going to use a corner cabinet and we're going to have a door of 344 and a filler of 40 mil. Now once you have a few cabinets on your drawing, you can right click to bring up some options. One of those options is to copy a cabinet. You can copy any cabinet in your room and place that around your drawing as necessary. 
Once that cabinet's in place, you can then right click to bring up further options. So here we're going to amend the size of that cabinet and we're going to change the width on that one from 400 up to 450. And we're just going to select right side, no move. That just means the right hand side of the cabinet is going to stay into position while the left hand side of the cabinet moves out. Another option you have once you have products sitting in your room is to right click and bring up the replace option. Now we can go into our library and replace that cabinet on the drawing with any other cabinet within the library. For example if we want to change that to a single drawer unit we can do that there and it will maintain the same dimensions that was already existing for the cabinet on the drawing. Now we're going to pop in a cabinet that's going to have a sink above it. So let's grab a double door base unit. We've got that in at 1000 wide. Next we're going to create a void space for our dishwasher. So to do this we're going to place two end panels on our drawing with a cabinet in between at 600 millimeters wide and then later on after we've placed our bench top on top we'll be deleting this cabinet. So for the meantime it's just a placeholder. Lastly we're going to be finishing off this drawing by duplicating this cabinet as well as the end panel and we're now going to replace this cabinet with a three drawer bank instead. So as you can see we've drawn up now a very basic L-shaped kitchen. We can click on the auto bench top button now and what that's going to do is it's going to bring forth all the settings that we've set up at the start for our worktop, the 30 mil high, the overhangs that we'd set up and in the color that we've specified. And now we're just going to delete that cabinet out that we set as a placeholder for the dishwasher space. We can then go into the library and find a dishwasher that's suitable and pop it into place. To get it into position, we're going to use the align function. The align function allows for the user to match up any item in KD Max with another item that's in position in the drawing already. So we're going to use the end panels that are in place here to make sure that this dishwasher is aligned all nice. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the oven that came as a default in our base oven cabinet. We're going to replace that with a, a bit of a different looking oven. We're going to pop on a, a sink into that cabinet we'd set up earlier. So we're going to cl click the sink that we desire, click on the cabinet where we want it to install and then it's going to bring up a pop-up demonstrating where that sink is going to be installed. So the blue line is the sink and the dotted yellow line is the cabinet and then you have the ability to adjust where you want that sink to sit over your cabinet. Now lastly we're going to add in a cooktop to sit on top of our oven. Again similar sort of scenario to adding in a sink. We're going to click on the cabinet where we want it to be applied above. It'll then bring up the diagram showing you how that hot plate can be applied and then we're just going to confirm where we want that to be oriented. Once you've got your cooktop laid out we're going to look to add in a range hood above that. So let's just select a range hood. We're now going to enter the dimensions that we want it, place it into position and then use the align function to make sure it's sitting centered above that hot plate. Lastly, we're just gonna extend that extractor pipe to the ceiling. And then the last thing we're gonna do here is add in a fridge into the space that we've created. So we're just going to choose from our library of fridges and pop that one into position. Then using again the align function, we're going to make sure this one lines up underneath our overhead cabinet and into position. Next we're going to hit the auto apply plinth button. This is adding in kickboards to all of our base and tall cabinetry. Once the kickboard has been applied, you can then actually go in and edit individual kickboards, delete sections, and you can even map out your own sections of where you want the kickboard to go. And lastly, we're just gonna apply a ceiling filler. So we're putting in a bulkhead above our cabinetry as well. Right, now it's time to turn on the lights and we're going to begin the rendering process. So rendering in KD Max is a two-step process. First, we turn the lights on. You'll start to see the, the drawing come to life as we bring in some shadows and reflections. And then the last step of this process is taking a quick render. This is now going over our drawing, throwing in reflection, throwing in shadows, and we begin to see our drawing come to life. Lastly, we're going to output this to, to get our plans and elevations. This will export the drawing into a CAD application that comes with KD Max. This gives you the full flexibility to look at your plan and elevation view. All your dimensions are in place. And from this point here, you can also make changes if you wish. 
We're going to finish up now by chopping our plans into uh, one of our title blocks that has a logo on it. And from there, you're done. So thank you for watching this video on KD Max. As you've seen from this video, KD Max is a very simple and easy to use design tool that can help present some really nice photorealistic images to your clients in lightning speed.